open Ember Gen and then choose the presets. Choose Game Explosion 1 and now you will see your explosion. First, let's uh, go through the interface. Here is where all the things happen, the explosion and the render view. And here is the timeline, here is the node graph, here is all the functionality that happens for the explosion. You can navigate, if I choose here default, you can navigate uh, with left mouse button holding and you can uh, just uh, do this and the scroll to zoom and zoom in and uh, the right mouse button is to look around. So if you press the middle mouse button you can pan. So next let's see the nodes that we have here. First we have the render node. This is basically your export node. This is the setting for exporting your texture. And after that we have the camera and if you press this button here and navigate to camera you see where your camera is placed. Next is the scene. The scene itself is not that important. You can do final post processing like the gamma or the exposure like any other software like uh, Photoshop or if you, if you have worked with post processing before. And here we have stuff connected to this node. We have the shading, the skybox. If I disable the skybox, you see uh, this is what happens. And for the shading, we have uh, lighting that we can just disable the sun. And here we have color grading. This is basically the color for our explosion. If I change this, uh, let's pick another color. You can see the highlights changes as this is the highlights here. Let's uh, get back to the original one. The ground is just the ground. Don't worry, the ground actually this uh, grid here won't render in your final image. So this is just for visualization here. And then let's get to this part here. It's the fun part where you can actually control the explosion itself. We have the simulation and if we go to the domain, domain is basically, if you see here, uh, the voxel count and the uh, size. This is the size of the domain, it's this uh, box here. This is basically the works, uh, workspace of your simulation. And if you can see currently our simulation is capped at the top. This is because the Z axis here is very small. If I put something like uh, 170, apply it and then from the beginning press play to simulate again you see the box is a little bit bigger so we will not have this cap here as we had before let's uh, get it back to 120 because the bigger this is the slower the simulation and for these purposes i need it fast let's see here in this panel in simulation we have combustion uh, this is uh, basically uh, for explosion and here in time control we have we can uh, create a looping animation for this purpose for exploding uh, as explosion texture we don't need it but you can create a looping like a fire looping fire and then uh, do that uh, we have a few other stuff here for example here in combustion uh, if i increase the flame intensity to like 100 and press uh, space you see it's a lot more intense uh, it's a lot uh, uh, more flames if i do it uh, to zero and control r to start from the beginning this is a lot less right let's bring it back to the original value and we have uh, dissipation here uh, i will show you uh, for the temperature if i put something like 100 here and simulate again the fire dissipates very fast so it disappears basically very fast and if i put it to zero it's very long it takes very long time for the fire to dissipate and it's very cool uh, so you can play with this one uh, the same with uh, velocity for example if i set 100 to here the flame will just stop very fast in place and uh, after that uh, we have other uh, things that we can dissipate but uh, we can do diffusion and if we uh, if we uh, see the current simulation this is how the simulation uh, behaves but let's say i uh, do something like 10 for temperature diffusion you will see how uh, 
it, it goes inside and it uh, behaves a little bit uh, differently, which is uh, which can be very cool. Uh, but these are things that you can use to control how the, the simulation works. Then you have other stuff as well. You can play around and uh, have a look at it, experiment. So let's explain these noises. Uh, as you see, there are two noises uh, that are connected to our simulation, and they're basically uh, a way to shape our uh, our shape, uh, kinda. So if I go to the noise, and as you see, this is just a noise. And here we have some settings for the noise, but I will show you if I scale the noise to something like 100. It's, uh, it behaves a little bit differently, and now this is the shape that is shaping our simulation. As you see, uh, and if I put it something like 0, uh, 0 0.01, it's uh, totally different again. Uh, and then uh, you, you can play with the noises, you can add other notes here, uh, you can right click uh, on empty space and uh, add any note you want, but for example in forces you have other stuff that you can uh, add, not only force noise, but you can add force line or anything else. And then we have the emitter volume. What is the emitter volume? This is the basically what you spawn the simulation from. Uh, currently it's this uh, cube. You can uh, change that by this node here, shape primitive. And currently it's a box, but let's say we want a sphere and now the simulation will uh, expand from the sphere itself. So for the shape primitive we also, or rather for emitter volume, we also have this uh, force uh, noise here. Again, you can put other forces, but uh, for example, for this thing, we have this noise, right? And we, if we do something uh, like a thousand, oops, sorry, and we simulate, the thing uh, totally changes. Uh, let's say I put it uh, something like uh, 66 or like uh, two. You see? So let's put 10. You see how it changes. It makes it a little bit more interesting, the shape itself. So you can change the shape uh, totally by this uh, note alone, really. So this may be one of the most important ones. And you can experiment with the other forces that you have. For example, if you put a line note here and with stable this one, let's see what this one uh, does. Uh, we can increase uh, the strength, let's say 100, and now it goes up. You see, you can do explosion like that, we can do something like uh, 50, let's say 50, and now it's uh, very cool, very cool. We can even do 20, and you can just play around. Yeah, very cool explosion here. So next, uh, let's actually create something that we can export. I'm going to go to shape primitive and uh, here I'm going to put this. Let's try something bigger because uh, we need a bigger explosion. Yeah, that looks uh, very cool. And uh, if you go to the camera, this is inside our camera. So everything is good. So we have uh, this kind of thing. And now to export it, we go to render. And uh, here we have some settings in render, uh, as I told you, we're gonna explore a flip book of size uh, uh, 2048 and it will be uh, 8 by 8 uh, the sub UV and first frame, you can basically pick the frame you start and I think I'm gonna start from something like this, which is like 40 and uh, if I let the simulation play uh, and see uh, which frame actually the simulation ends, we have the number of frames, which is 64, which is 8 by 8, which is 64, and then uh, around 20, uh, 202 uh, it ends, so uh, 200 minus uh, 40 is 160. Uh, we need uh, 3 here, frames, right? This is how uh, 
it skips every three frames, it renders every three frames, so we have 180. If uh, we multiply 3 by, uh, by 64, we, had, we have 180, so I, I, I'm sorry if it's uh, confusing, but this is uh, how it is. And I will just, uh, you can change the uh, format of uh, and the file name and then uh, your directory. And let's say I want to export this. Uh, I guess I have something, I will do something uh, that I know I don't have. And now it will start ex uh, exporting. After you're done exporting, in the export uh, section here, you will see uh, how your texture actually looks. Uh, in my case, I don't really like this one. However, we can uh, control R and uh, we can pick another place or something else and uh, just have our, our texture and use it in our game.